I'm coming to you from Davos, Switzerland, where we've just wrapped up day one of the World Economic Forum's 2023 annual meeting. A lot of the really meaty sessions don't start until tomorrow, Tuesday. Today was more of a ceremonial affair, but even so, they went right headfirst into things by talking about how we can all live climate-positive lifestyles. Uh, what is a climate-positive lifestyle for you? Yeah, so um, the, I think the challenge is that, um, except for indigenous people who really had this uh, nature-positive lifestyle, you know, today we have such a footprint you know, with everything we do. Even if we come with the train, there's always a big footprint in producing this train, in, in producing the rails. So actually, it's not possible in, in Switzerland to have a um, climate-positive or nature-positive lifestyle, except except if you're actively investing into nature. And I think this is what we need, no? We need not just to talk about the footprint, but also the handprint, no? So uh, that's why also I dedicate my full professional life in Parliament, but also I work at South Pole. We, we try to have a positive impact on the world. And I think this need, needs to be an ambition that we invest into nature to, to have again this, this, this positive uh, net, net balance, no? That was the first discussion to take place at this year's World Economic Forum annual meeting, though much of the festivities today were actually more ceremonial in nature. They held the annual Crystal Awards, where they reward some of their honoured celebrity guests for all their work and all their participation in things like climate change and sustainability and all of that. The opera singer Renee Fleming received an award, the actor Idris Elba. And they also gave a big warm welcome to members of the media who are here ostensibly to cover the World Economic Forum forum. Tonight had a media welcome reception, which I as an accredited member of the press was invited to. Uh, mainly, I just wanted to see the spread that was going to be put out for journalists and see if that might be influencing one way or another <laughs> whether these journalists are prepared to ask the tough questions. Idris Alba and a couple of representatives of the United Nations were there in what was more of a social affair for journalists and the WEF than anything else. Now, as I said, this is just the first day. We've got four more days to come and we'll be carrying all of this with you things that are happening in the sessions, things that are happening on the streets outside of Davos, whether it's conversations on the sidelines with various participants or protests like the one that took place on the weekend before this even started. If you have anything you want to see here, do let us know in the comments section. And again, we are here with just my videographer and I. We don't have the giant TV crew team that a lot of the mainstream media outlets do. So if you want to support our work here, please head over to donate.tnc.news, donate.tnc.news. From Davos for True North, I'm Andrew Lott. Button.